This is my second video about DIY zinc coating and there are some learning effects since I have published part one. The first one, there are major differences between the galvanization kits on the market and any of them require specific processes. There is no point in trying to cover them all with something like a general recipe. This film is about the Gateros kit and to get straight to the point, it gives a hell of a lot better results than what I've used before. So that stuff, it kills people. Oh yeah, definitely. Highly toxic, highly carcinogenic. It gets into your DNA too, so you pass the trouble along to your kids. It's very, very bad. As we know from Erin, if you love life, don't use Chrome 6. And that is bringing me right to the second point. Gateros have replaced Chrome 6 by the much less unhealthy Chrome 3 or Trivalent Chrome whilst still achieving that adorable golden yellow look of the parts. Don't get me wrong, almost all the substances involved in galvanic processes are to some degree unhealthy and they require proper handling and waste management, but at least you no longer need to work with stuff that kills you with a couple of milliliters entering your body. In my first video I also said that HCl is not necessary to get the coating done and I still believe it isn't. Sandblasting and some proper cleaning work are just as good. However, with growing confidence in being able to control the process, I have to admit that it's an efficient tool to prepare the parts. In this video, therefore, HCL will play a bigger role. And here go the sample parts. They all belong to my current Alfa Romeo Giulia project. In order to run the zinc coating process, we need to remove all sorts of adhesions, grease, paint, rust, former zinc coating, till we find a bright metal surface. For a first cleanup, I'm using my trusted ultrasonic cleaner along with some standard degreaser thinned with hot water. Hydrochloric acid removes layers of zinc and rust very efficiently. However, it doesn't work on old paint and these grime crusted surfaces, so I gave this guy here an additional sandblasting. These parts are ready now to go into the HCL bath. Okay, let's go through the process. The kit comes with an alkaline cleaner and some dry acid that etches the surface of the part in preparation of the galvanic coating. The cleaner works very well, especially if you heat it in an additional water bath like I did with that bracket. Now when I use HCL to prepare the parts, I simply leave out both the alkaline cleaning and the etching and I move on to galvanic plating right away. The actual zinc coating is carried out in the white bucket. Next the electrolyte needs to be rinsed and I take distilled water for this step in order to not contaminate the subsequent liquid, which is the passivation bath. The kit comes with liquids for yellow and blue chromatization, but as I said before, I just love the golden look. The final step is to rinse off the chromatization fluid. I take tap water for that. This is the bucket with the electrolyte. A cheap aquarium pump improves the coating result significantly. I really consider it as a mandatory tool. The entire setup of the galvanic coating is already described in my first video, but for the sake of completeness, use about 0.1 amps for every surface area of the size of a postage stamp.
Now for working with HCL. What you normally get when ordering HCL in Amazon or so. That's in fact 33% HCL filled up with water. But anyway, it works great. It can be no question of discussion. Using proper safety gear is essential because any splash of HCL caused by some part escaping your hand can change your life forever. It's also important to see that drops of HCL adhere to air moisture and therefore reach eyes and lungs. Not good. To clean parts that are lifted out of the HCL bath, I use a spray bottle with distilled water first, then rinse them, then spray them again. Otherwise, the HCL concentration in the rinsing fluid will allow acid parts going into the electrolyte, hence contaminating it over time. It is very important that the coating process is then started right away because it only takes minutes if not seconds before the stripped surface will build up corrosion. I therefore don't divide my coating process in steps, first stripping, then coating, then passivating and so on, but I arrange it like a production line where part by part is pushed through the full process in one go. It takes about 20 minutes to build up a nice and shiny surface with the Gateros kit. The manual also makes clear statements about the operating temperatures of the single chemicals and I've made the experience it's important to follow them. The parts go into the passivation bath for about one minute and next they are one more time rinsed. I dip them in and take them out slowly and carefully in order to avoid high flow speeds. It happened to me that taking them out too quickly ended up in streaky colors indicating an uneven buildup of the passivation layer. Given the entirely manual process, there are obviously factors that have an influence on the flawless, even look that I want to achieve. Here's one measure that I take to improve things. The process starts with the HCL bath, but once the part is coated, it's not going directly into the passivation, but after rinsing it, it is first dipped into a mild HCL pickle of roughly 5-7%. to I leave it in there for just some seconds till I see first bubbles raising and take it out and rinse it again. The bubbles obviously result from an etching of the freshly coated part which adds some evenness and smoothness to the surface. Aha, and the Darth Vader sound results from wearing the respirator mask.
Finally, let's talk about assemblies like this bonnet fastener of the Julia, consisting of hooks and springs and hinges. Basically, as we're using liquids that obviously go into gaps and undercuts, the whole process also works for assemblies. And here's one major advantage of working with HCL, because obviously blasting only works if the beads have a chance to hit the surface. The rest of it works exactly like always and as the nested structure of the assembly keeps liquids from dripping off quickly, I avoid drops that create marks by soaking them up with the tissue. I sometimes also air dry parts to avoid drip marks, but honestly, these rainbow colored drip marks, I kind of like them. It helps a lot to move around the assembly while it's coated, but there are of course limitations like long and thin cavities and places where surfaces have direct contact. I can live with some uncoated areas because the part is going to receive some grease anyway, which will perform the rest of the required rust protection. I'm smart, I'm hardworking, and I'll do anything, and I'm not leaving here without a job.